but I can hear me. Welcome to another weekly edition of the best way to smoke news. You know that news that you can't refuse from the hub and the dub. Man. Yep, and it's being presented to you by Serpo Jr. Big J. And also sponsored by this glue guard. Stop smoking spit. No drip lips. Leave them drip lips to yourself. Yep. And cannabis regulators in Vermont have paused accepting new cannabis retail and some cultivation applications in an effort to curb the problem of retail mm. saturation. Hmm. Vermont regulators last week paused accepting new cannabis retail um, and some cultivation applications. And um, I don't know what he's waving at, but Cannabis Control Board Chair James Pepper. I don't think he's related to Pepper from Iron Man. But he <laughs> said he said the decision is, <laughs> is meant to curb the problem of retail saturation. <laughs> You can't get a bank loan to start a cannabis company. Mm. You can't live, I mean, excuse me, you can't have a line of credit to make ends meet at the end of the month. Um, if you're short on cash, you don't have a, a bankruptcy protection. If you have to pay uh, exorbitant taxes. Oh, I got that shit. You um, get it too, huh? Yeah. And you can't... <laughs> And you can't write off normal business expenses that you would if you were any other type of business. And so you think of, oh, excuse me. And so you can, mm, I don't know what I'm seeing. My glass is kind of foggy. And so you kind of stack all these up and it's a very challenging market. Pepper, no relation to so the Iron Man chick. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying, back on topic, this is something that, because they'll be talking about a lot as far as, like, this business is going. Mm. And as far as, like, the rescheduling and descheduling. So, you know what I'm saying? All jokes to the side. But get the rescheduling, deschedule. Yes. Because once you reschedule, you know what I'm saying, there still can be certain stipulations put to where you can't get a bank loan. Right. You can't do all these, you know what I'm saying, exorbitant taxes, yep. evades, and all of that stuff. Yep. But if you de... What? Decriminalize. You can do all of that. You know what I'm saying? Everything. Because it's like, what are you tracking? You know what I'm saying? So touch right. Yep. Let's go. Moving on. And criminalize that. Criminalize. Everywhere. Arizona courts. One of the homies said that's Trump. Oh, yeah, he did say that though. <laughs> right. Hold on. Yeah, that's somebody with L Thomas though. Look, <laughs> cannabis pills reduce agitation in L Thomas patients by 30%. Hmm. So a new study reveals that drawn nalabinol. A synthetic form of THC can reduce agitation in Alzheimer's patients by 30%. Unlike current medications, drone <laughs> showed fewer side effects such as delirium or seizures, making it safer, a safer alternative. Researchers conducted an eight year clinical trial involving 75 patients finding significant improvement in agitation without adverse results. This discovery offers hope for better management of Alzheimer's symptoms and could ease the burden on caregivers. Hmm. Key facts. Drone reduces agitation in Alzheimer's patients by 30%. It demonstrated fewer side effects compared to traditional treatments. The study concluded included 75 patients over eight years. Mm -hmm. So drone is the pill? Yeah, that's 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 the uh um, oh, the medication? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the that's the medication um that they're providing and shit though. You know what I'm saying? His name was drone. <laughs> he looked like it and shit though, huh? <laughs> but that look, that's good though. You know what I'm saying? Though. That they have something that can that can actually help. Cause I've been around somebody with Alzheimer's before. Mm -hmm. And the irritation is there, though, from the person and shit like that. And they could snap on you and shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And just, like, be upset and be, you know, to have some kind of help with that, I think that's dope. You know what I mean? That's man? super cool. And just like, you know what I'm saying, not to keep piggybacking on it, but get the reschedule and deschedule. Because once you deschedule, you can actually research more information just like that. Facts. Because that's, like, I, I really didn't know, you know what I'm saying, you can put that into a simple pill and then help it by what, like, what you say, 30-something percent? 30 percent. Man, that's great. Jonabano. 
<laughs> Let's go. Move AKA up. drone. Yeah, drone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. A judge, a judge in Lancaster County, not in LA, but uh, Nebraska, is allowing parts of a lawsuit that challenges the state's two petition to legalize medical cannabis to move forward. We always with that as far as medical cannabis goes. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no we question. We fight a little bit for recreational, but as far as medical, I believe it should be mandated. Facts. Um, a Lancaster County, a Nebraska judge is allowing parts of the lawsuit challenging the two petitions to legalize cannabis, uh, medical cannabis, excuse me, to move forward. Um, I don't know what the uh, the WOWT, I believe it's one of their broadcasters. Um in an order last week, Judge Suzanne Strong said that while the petitions has cleared the state's single subject uh, rule, that they didn't uh, that they did um, contain enough information about the sponsors. The claim that the Secretary of State Bob Evanen uh, failed to strike duplicate signatures would be allowed to proceed in court. The lawsuit was filed earlier this month by John Quinn a former state board of health member, a uh, veterinarian and rancher who was opposed any form of cannabis legalization. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, who has opposed. I mean, like, you go against it, right? Sure. So we ain't rocking with you. No. Oh. But um, legal medical cannabis, I don't care what nobody say, I believe that should be, like, mandated. You know what I'm saying? I believe all the research should be there for you to research it and properly, you know what I'm saying? Help patients out. Man, that's a not yay. diagnose. But that's a help. yay. That's a yay all around the best way to smoke board, right? Yay, there. yay. So for sure, for sure. Arizona court says marijuana users must actually be impaired to be punished for DUI. This reinforces our understanding of the voters' intent expressed through their enactment of Proposition 207 that unimpaired driving after consuming marijuana cannot be penalized. That I said penalized, but that needs to be everywhere, though. You know what I'm saying? I believe that word. I understood exactly what you said, cuz I was... Yeah, the state can suspend someone's driver's license because they have THC in their bloodstream unless they are actually impaired while behind the wheel. The Arizona Court of Appeals ruled upholding a provision in a marijuana legalization law that voters passed in 2020. Shout out to the to AZ on that one, though, for mm -hmm. sure, for sure. I, I really hope California can adopt that. Man, we need to put that in the face of uh, Governor Newsom. Man, sign that bill. Hey, what do you say to the people who be high so much that they just normal, but then when you not high, you seem high? Man. I wonder what they gonna do to them people. On the real. Uh, right. <laughs> That's real shit. <laughs> Man. Uh, the DEA is proposing uh, revised 2024 and new 2025 production quotes for research grade psychedelics, including psilocybin, psilocin, and ibogaine. Mm. Ibogaine. <laughs> I hope I said it right, though. Y'all know. They what know. I'm about. Yeah, if you know, you know. You know. Yeah, you know. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the agency says the new production rates are needed to drive new research. I believe that sounds promising. Let me, mm. Let's read along real quick. The Drug Enforcement Agency last week opposed increasing its 2024 production quotes for research grade um, psychedelic compounds, including psilocybin, psilocin, and ibogaine. Ibogaine. Um, according to a Lucid News report, um, the, the revised uh, production agenda posted in a notice to the Federal Reserve calls for increasing production from 20,000 to 30,000 grams of psilocybin and from 24,000 to 36,000 grams of psilocin and 50% overall increase, a 50% overall increase. Right. Um, the numbers also represent DEA's new production quotes for those um, substances for 2025, meaning, in my opinion, that the data that they're receiving is a thumbs up. Right. You know what I'm saying? You get a little bit more fun and we can get two thumbs up. Mm -hmm. All right. The agency also called for increasing ibogaine, 
Man, in the comments somewhere, the psilocybin users, the shroomer things, you know what I'm saying? Help me out with this word. Facts. Um, but the agency also called for increasing e-booking uh, production in 2025 from uh, 150 to 210 to 210 grams, but did not call for increasing the production of MDMA or DMT, the report said. So, you know what I'm saying? They noticing some type of difference between yeah. the actual shrooms Psilocybin, psilocin, and ibogaine. Right. You know what I'm saying? Versus the MDMAs, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the DMTs and all that. You know what I'm saying? That so, might be a motherfucking word in Africa or something, <laughs> though. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? Ibogaine. If it is, that's your weekly news with Serpo Jr. Big J. Yep, the best way to smoke weight. <laughs>